All right, everybody. What we're going to do in this video is construct a little bit of Klein's theorem. And Klein's theorem says that regular expressions, deterministic finite automata, or DFAs, and non-deterministic finite automata, or NFAs, are all the same power. They're all a description of regular languages. None of them is describing more than that or less than that. It is one and only, and that's it. Um, so what we're going to do uh, is first recap a little bit about what it means to be an NFA. Um, and relate that to DFAs. If you're a DFA, when you're in a state, there is a transition away from you on every input of the alphabet. Um, let me give you a little picture here. So in this particular picture, if you look at state A, um, and let's, let's erase this line right here for a second. If you're in state A, there is a transition away from it on both 0 and 1. And that state then is deterministic. But there are a few things that we can add that would make this non-deterministic, which means we don't actually know which specific state we're in at all times. And we're going to go over a couple of those here. If you look at state B, there's a transition away from state B on 0 to C and D. That makes it non-deterministic because we don't know which way we're supposed to go when we're looking at the input 0. Maybe we go to C. Maybe we go to D. It's kind of a guess. It's non-deterministic. Maybe we run them both in parallel. And so what we end up doing is saying, all right, we'll track where we're at kind of using two fingers, one that says where we go, um, or, or multiple fingers, one that says where we go, like which, which states are we in at this point in time. Another thing that you'll notice that's special about state B is that there is no transition away on the 1. If the input alphabet is both 0 and 1, then B, in order to be deterministic, would have to tell us where to go on a 1. In this case, it doesn't. And so what we do is we fall off of the machine at B. Now, if we are in another state at that time, then that other state will continue on. But falling off at B is kind of like there's a transition from B to the null trap state on a 1. And then the last new thing that we can add um, for determinism is a guess for when we're supposed to just freely jump to another state. And so in this one, I have this empty string transition from A to D. And what that means is that anytime we're in state A, we can immediately go to state D for free. And those are kind of the three new things that NFAs add to DFAs. And what I'm here to show you is that it's not actually more powerful. And the way that I'm going to show you that is using the subset construction. Now, you could turn this into a full proof and prove that all NFAs are DFAs using the same subset construction. I am not endeavoring to do that. And what I am endeavoring to do today is just to show you um, that we can do it and show you how to do it and kind of give you some practice making that happen. So how does subset construction work? The way it works is at any point in time, I want to keep track of what states I'm in by using a subset for every state. So if I start off in state A, state A immediately forces me to state D for free. And so what I'm going to say is I am in the set of states A and D at this point in time. I haven't even started yet, and I'm in a set of states. If I were tracking where I was in this diagram with fingers, I would be in state A and D at the same time. I would use two fingers, kind of put them on A and D and say, I'm in both of these states because that empty string transition allows me to go there for free. And then for every transition, I have to kind of figure out what that means. So if I transition away from this on a zero or a one, I have to figure out where that goes. So A on a zero goes to state B, D on a zero falls off of the machine. So this transition on a zero goes to state B. Okay. Um, and now let's look at what happens if I see a 1. A on a 1 also goes to state B, but now we have something that happens on a D. D, when you see a 1, goes to state C. So now I can be in the state B or C. I can be in either one or I'm in both of them, depending on how you want to think of it. What's also special about this state is that C is an accept state. So anytime an accept state shows up in our set of states, we're going to call this thing an accept state. Um, and as, if you're used to u using NFAs, you'll see that this is kind of like, okay, I finished processing the number one in my, in my diagram, and um, one of those ended up, one of my fingers ended up being in state C, one of my fingers ended up being in state B, and the rules for the NFA are if any finger ends up in an accept state, then you accept. All right, so that's our situation. We have one from, from the first state, we go on a zero, we go to B, on a one, we go to B and C. And then we just follow this process out to its conclusion, all right? So B on a 0 goes to state B, sorry, that's wrong, goes to state C or D, okay, like this. All right, um, and that's done. How about on a 1? 
B falls off of the machine on a 1. So we're going to need a null state. I'm going to draw the null state up here. Um, we're going to probably need that a couple of times in this particular diagram because D doesn't have any transitions on it in some places. And then we just keep keep picking a state and figuring out where it goes on zeros and ones. So look at this BC down here at the bottom. On a zero, we know we go to CD for B. How about C? C falls off. That's good. So we're done. So on a zero, BC goes to CD. And on a one, B falls off and C falls off. So on a one, we're going to jump all the way around and go to this null state. Okay. All right, so now we have the state CD. Let's see what happens with that. On a 1, C falls off, but D goes to state C. Well, you know, we forgot to circle our accept state up there. C, this state is an accept state because it has a C in it. All right, so on a 1, CD goes to C because C falls off and D goes to C. On a 0, D falls off and C falls off. So on a 0, this goes to the null state. And I think I forgot to label this guy down here. All right, now we have state C. State C on a 0 and a 1 also goes to the null state. All right, and so this is our new machine um, that should be a DFA because all transitions for every state have exactly, you know, one transition. There are no empty string transitions. Every state has a transition for every input alphabet. Let's check that all of these numbers are accepted by the machine. How about a 1? That's this process right here. How about um, zero, zero? That's that process right there. How about zero, zero, one? Okay, so that's the zero, zero that we saw before plus this one. How about one, zero? Let's not use black here. One, zero. One, zero is the one we had before, which is in green, plus this zero right here. How about one zero one? Well, that is the the green, brown, blue. <laughs> I guess I drew that in purple there. The green, brown, blue lines on this on this chart here, and because there were no loops in the original diagram, this 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 language is rather finite. It only has these five strings, but hopefully you can see that all five of those strings are covered. And then any other transition that doesn't match anything in those five strings immediately goes to the null trap state and is stuck there forever. So these are our five strings. That's it. No more, no less. So let me help you a, a little bit with understanding why and how we usually use these, these things. So in order to do that, I am going to transition to, to the full tablet here. So usually we might use this to do something like combine two machines together. Okay, so if I had a machine that say, describes all strings that begin with a zero, that machine might look like this, right? And then if I had another machine that say, described all strings that end with a zero, that machine might look like this. So take, take a second to look at these and make sure that that makes sense. It begins with a zero, continues any number of zeros and ones, or has any number of zeros and ones and ends with a zero. What's interesting about these machines is they're both NFAs. They're really easy to write as NFAs. We don't have to think about all the transitions in DFAs. Um, now, if we wanted to combine them into this language where we say either this machine or this machine, a lot of times that's where these empty string transitions come in. So what we'll do is we'll add a new start state that will have empty string transitions to the old start states. And that way, what we're saying is we could either go to the top way or we could come down to the bottom way. And it's an either or sort of proposition. We can go one way or the other. And so this is a neat way to use um, to use these things. This is a neat way to kind of combine these. And so what I'd like to do is kind of work on taking this, okay, taking this machine here and then translating that into a DFA. So I'm going to copy this to a new page here. And we are going to work on translating this into a DFA. And so let me let me draw a line that shows me where you can't see anymore. So I can make sure that we're, we're drawing on the appropriate part of the screen here. Um, and, and let's see if we can't make that happen. Okay, so how do we start? We start in the same way. I'm going to start with our first state. And I'm going to include all the states we can reach. So in this case, from the first state, I can reach 
B and D. A has empty strings, transitions to B and D. So our start state is actually the state A, B, and D. And so the way we simulate this is I start in A, and I immediately have these free jumps to B and D. So I would need three fingers to figure out what state I'm in to start. When I see a zero, I have to consider where each of these states goes on a zero. A goes nowhere. A falls off. B goes to C. And D goes to C, D, and E. So this, this arrow goes to C, D, and E. Because B goes to C and D goes to D and E. And this is an accept state because both C and E are accept states. And if either of them had been an accept state, it would be an accept state. What happens on a one? On a one, A goes nowhere, B goes nowhere, but D goes back to itself. So on a one, D is gonna come down here to a state by itself. Um, let's do the bottom state first because it seems like it's kind of, kind of hanging out there a little bit by itself. Um, if we see a zero and we're in state D, then we go to state D or E, which is an accept state because E is an accept state. If we see a one, we go back to state D, right? If we're in state D or E and we see a zero, then we should stay in D or E because D goes to itself or E on a zero. So this stays here. If we see a one, E falls off, but D goes back to itself. So there's a transition back to state D on a one. What's interesting about this machine down here, if you look at it relatively closely, this machine down here talks about any string that begins with a one and ends with a zero, right? If we, if we follow this green path, this green path is talking about anything that begins with a one and ends with a zero. We have to end with a zero to accept down here, right? So it's interesting. This, this green path is any string that begins with a one and ends with a zero. All right, let's finish this top path up here. We've got C, D, and E. It's possible this top path intermingles with the bottom path. Because of the way that I constructed this language, that's not going to happen. But if you are doing the subset construction, don't get upset if that does happen for you. Uh, all right, let's see. On a C and we get a zero. On a C and a zero, we go back to C. A D on a zero goes to D or E. So on a zero, we go back to ourselves. A C on a one goes back to C, a D goes back to D. So on a one, we're gonna go to the state C or D, which is an accept state. All right, now we have to look at the state C, D. Um, C and D both go back to themselves on a zero and one, so we have to see if there's any extra. And it turns out there is. D on a zero goes to D and E. And then on a one, they just go back to themselves. Now, if you were to do some analysis, you would find that these states are collapsible into one state. They don't actually add any new information since they're both accept states. Um, that's okay. We're not trying to do a minimalist construction here. We're just trying to do some construction at all. And if you look at this process in the blue, that is any string that begins with a zero is accepted. That seems like the same path as the top path from before. Any string that begins with a zero is accepted. Now, what seems different is this bottom path says it has to also begin with a one. And it doesn't really also have to begin with a one. The reason that this is separate is because it's a DFA and not an NFA construction. Because any string that begins with a zero was already accepted. We don't have to think about it anymore, right? We saw the zero, we ended up in this right half of the blue part here, we accept. Whereas on the left part, it's any string that began with a one, then we have to make sure if it began with a one, we have to make sure that it ends with a zero right? Because if it began with a zero, we already would have accepted. And this is the magic of what this subset construction will do. It kind of collapses this language and merges these two languages together in this interesting way. Um, it will always work. It, it is, it is, a. Uh, it's something you can prove formally. Um, it is an amazing thing. All right. So we've talked about NFAs again. We've talked about DFAs again, and we've worked through the subset construction for a couple of sample problems. We looked at some places where NFAs might be useful, like when we're combining two different machines together or two different languages together. Um, and we've, we've done the subset construction for a couple of problems. So I hope that is helpful. All right, that's all we've got for today. This is the proof for part of Clean's theorem. Um, we'll do some more proofs for other parts in future videos. All right, see you guys.